hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 32 of uchiha naruto the sage remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share it to all of your friends on your social media platform and also on my main channel tonight i'm going to be posting what if naruto went missing for four years and also what if naruto was taken by the right hagi so remember to stay in tune and switch over to my main channel and go ahead and have fun and enjoy yourself. And if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime making family and be a part of the channel. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. You can So to do with a recap, Naruto killed off Yagura and it was time for him to leave the mist. He then met up with Kakashi, Jiraiya and Sasuke as he put Sasuke in a Sukuyomi world and told Sasuke that two of them are going to rebuild the Uchiha clan and make it better than ever. But before he went back to the leaf he had some things to deal with like take care of Orochimaru for once and for all. I also explained what happened to the nine tail fox within Naruto in the last episode? So if you guys haven't yet switched across and enjoy that for yourself. So the last part we left off when Naruto was going after Orochimaru. So let's get straight into this new episode. Naruto finally reached a throne room. It was hard to sense chakra from the dark passages. But here he could sense several large chakra signatures. But the largest was Orochimaru's. Speaking of Orochimaru, he was sitting on the throne as his arms were crossed and resting back. He was waiting with a smile on his face. Welcome Naruto, I was wondering when you would appear in front of me. After your little show in the mist, Orochimaru said while his servants simply kept their eyes on Naruto. Little show? Little show? Naruto said, repeating himself. I believe those that can call it a little show is those that can do better Orochimaru and in your current state I doubt that you can lay a finger on Yagura. Orochimaru continued to smirk as he looked Naruto from his head to his toe. I wonder said Naruto how can you remain so calm last time I did show you that I was far superior to you. I thought you would be running away knowing that I would be after you. That is what a snake does best after all. Oh my, you are rather talky today aren't you Naruto? Orochimaru said with a grin, a creepy grin. Do not get overconfident boy, things will not go as they did last time. Let me guess, they will be different because you are a sanin right? The slight frown from Orochimaru gave Naruto the answer. Naruto shook his head disappointedly. And here I thought that you were smart Orochimaru. Orochimaru then snapped his fingers and four figures stepped forward. Sending your children to their deaths. Are you that cold Orochimaru? Naruto asked. Orochimaru ignored Naruto. Give our guests a proper visit. He ordered. Yes Orochimaru. The four figures replied at the same time. Naruto shifted his eyes as he looked at them. This is a famous sound 5, no rather the 4. The leader is dead, such a pity. As Naruto knew the leader of the group, Kimimaru and he was the strongest. Perhaps even stronger than Kabuto if it was not for his illness. Who the hell do you think you are? The red haired woman said. She was the only female in the throne room. What kind of dumb question is that? Naruto asked as he stared her directly in the eyes. She was about to curse at Naruto when her teammate stopped her. Teyawaya, don't get riled up before we even fight our opponent. Screw you fatty, she said irritable. This was another kind of woman that Naruto was seeing. He has never seen her kind before. Perhaps she was the way she was because she spent more of her time with man. 
and she never get the chance to do anything womanly are you guys just gonna stand there or are you guys gonna come at me said naruto as that did the trick they charge at naruto all four of them as they all vanish naruto then activate his eternal mangeto sharingan unfortunately i have important matters to deal with and i don't have time to waste with a bunch of idiots said naruto as he prepared to fight the sound four he could see them scoff with his eyes when he said those words they did not think that he could beat them such pitiful children's jirobo the fat one was the first to charge at naruto he appeared in front of naruto and swings an up to give naruto an uppercut naruto simply leaned back as he avoided the punch just as he did that he blocked against a flying kick that was coming towards his head he then ducked under the powerful punch as Teiwai passed him and hit the ground. He then narrowed his eyes to his left side as he felt someone charge at him. As he saw Seikon charging towards him, he was fast. But Naruto was faster. The sound didn't jump up in the air as Naruto was still in a crouched down position after blocking Teiwai's kick. Seikon came descending down to Naruto to kick Naruto right in the head. Naruto brought both of his hands out as he blocked the attack. While still on the ground, Jirobo charged him and kicked him from behind. As Jirobo's foot made contact with the gun bay on Naruto's back, which it absorbed. As Naruto then flipped back and got out of their range. As he landed on the ground gracefully, but was forced to jump back again to avoid a powerful punch that created a big hole in the ground from Jirobo. Naruto then quickly tilted his head as he avoided a golden arrow that almost pierced him. The arrow flew past him at a rather fast speed and hit the wall breaking right through it. The sound four stood next to each other with smirk on their faces. They were all smiling because they were having Naruto on the defensive. I don't see how this guy is to be strong. He doesn't seem that badass, said Teowaya. He just seemed like a stupid. Dumbass brat. Orochimaru just sat and watched with interest as the teamwork of his elite guards were above average as they worked together well. He was pleased how things were going at the moment but he will still not underestimate Naruto. He did it last time and he almost died and he will not do it again. Naruto had yet to be on the offensive. Meanwhile, Kabuto stood stiff as a statue as he was beside Orochimaru. Orochimaru didn't notice this because he was watching the show. Interesting, Naruto said as he looked at the sound 4. I guess that is my time now. One of you will be dead in the next minutes, Naruto said as Teowaya and all of them scoff at his words. Naruto then charged at the four of them with incredible speed. Within seconds, he was already in front of them with a single hand signed. Hell, wind release, wind breakthrough, he muttered. He didn't use the wind to cause much damage, but it was enough to make them lose their footing. Kidmaru managed to escape from the jutsu, but Naruto did not attack the ones that were hit by the jutsu. No, he vanished from sight as he appeared in front of Seikon. As Seikon didn't predict this kind of speed, as Naruto appeared in front of him, kicking him in the chest, sending him flying away. Naruto then sidestep a punch from Kidamaru. Within seconds, Teiwai was in front of him with a raised foot intending to slam her foot down on his temple. Naruto simply caught the kick with his hand. Jirobo then charged at him with the intent to break a few bones. Naruto squeezed onto Teiwai's leg as he spinned around in a high speed and release her as she slammed right into Jirobo. Naruto then flashed behind the two before they could reform. But before he could do anything, Seikon appeared in front of him and stopped him. But Naruto did not waste time as he muttered, Amaterasu. Seikon was then engulfed by black flames that started to engulf his flesh little by little. He screamed out as the heat was absorbing his body. He fell to the ground kicking and screaming as he tried to put out the fire but nothing would work. Naruto then took out his blade as he walked calmly towards Seikon. He channeled Wind Chakra into his blade as he was about to cut off Seikon's head ready to end his misery. 
but he was stopped from going forward as an arrow landed in front of him. He looked up to see Kidamaru holding a bow. One more step closer and I will spill your guts with my next arrow, he shouted. You really think that you can pierce me with your toys? Arrogant child, thought Naruto. Naruto put back his sword as he spoke. I wanted to end this misery, but I guess we will just have to watch him suffer. Kidamaru's response was shooting arrows towards Naruto. Naruto pulled out his blade again as he sliced each and every arrow in half with his wing chakra into his sword. A minute later, Seikon was already dead due to extreme pain and a part of his body consumed by the black flames. Naruto then vanished as he appeared behind the other tree as he did not want them to use their curse mark as it would just waste his time and he wanted to go for the main fish right now that is Orochimaru. He ran through hand signs as he muttered, Lightning release, Lightning dragon, before any of them could notice him. But they did however notice a chakra spike from behind them. But before they could do anything the lightning dragon already reached them. It hit them dead on and gave them incredible shock towards their bodies, leaving their entire bodies paralyzed temporarily. Naruto knew that Orochimaru saw him behind his bodyguards. But yet, Orochimaru did not do anything, so he was not going to get involved even when he thought that Naruto was going to kill them. Naruto then grabbed Kidamaru by the neck as he squeezed his neck and slammed his fist into his gut. He then threw him into the ear. He then waited as he spin around as he knew that Kidamaru was coming back towards him. As he kicked him like a ball as he slammed into the wall. He then moved fast and kicked Jirobo away from Teiwaya. Naruto then placed his hand on Teiwaya's head. Sign of the yellow dragon, he muttered as he gathered a large amount of chakra. Orochimaru wondered what Naruto was up to as he felt the chakra. As Orochimaru was alarmed when he felt the electricity that Naruto started generating inside of his body. He could then see Naruto's entire body sparkling with lightning. His curiosity got the better of him as he decided to watch the show. Naruto then let out all of the electricity on Teiwaya as it burned right through her body turning her into ash. Naruto then turned around as he felt a large chakra spike. The two remaining had activated their curse mark seal, something that Naruto didn't want to happen, it would just waste more time. Well, I guess it cannot be helped, he said as he pulled out his sword. Kidamaru, who was now holding a golden blade, was the first to charge at Naruto and attempted a vertical slash across Naruto's chest. Naruto leaped back as he avoided the attack. But Kidamaru did not stop with his attacks as he swung his blade rampant and wild to cut Naruto's head off of his body for what he did to his teammates. Naruto then dodged one of his swipes. I've had enough of this, said Naruto, as he pulled up his blade. To swipe at Kidamaru, Kidamaru intended to block it, but he didn't realize that Naruto's blade was infused with wind chakra. As Naruto cut right through his blade and with one quick slice, sliced Kidamaru in half. Jirobo rushed at Naruto, intending on killing Naruto, but he made one mistake as he looked into Naruto's eyes. Haven't you been told that to look into a Uchiha's eyes was suicide? Sukuyomi said Naruto. Jirobo then fell down as he dropped unconscious. Naruto walked over as he placed two of his fingers on Jirobo's chest where his heart was. Lightning release. Lightning beam Naruto said as he released a beam of lightning that pierced right through Jirobo's heart killing him. Naruto then turned as he looked all of Orochimaru's bodyguards were dead. It was now him and him alone. Now, Orochimaru, shall we? Stated Naruto as he held on to his blade. He walked towards Orochimaru's throne before stopping as he noticed that something was wrong with Orochimaru. You are weakened, severely, Naruto stated as he looked at Orochimaru who was still seated comfortably on his throne. No wonder you did not attempt to take advantage of me while I was fighting with your children. You know you would have died, Naruto said 
as he was a bit disappointed. He wanted to face Orochimaru in his true power, but Orochimaru was currently weak. Orochimaru smirk as Naruto sighed. In your current state, I cannot fight you seriously, he said as he placed back his sword on his side into the sash. You are too weak, said Naruto. Killing a weak Sanin, no. You are no longer deserving to call a Sanin. You are below me. Orochimaru chuckled as he stood up, as his chakra was sick and demented, as it would have hurt anyone else the killing intent that he was sending off. But it was Naruto, and he was all badass now, so he didn't really care. He just looked at Orochimaru with unimpressed eyes. You underestimate me, Naruto, Orochimaru said, as he was still standing. Like I said, things won't go the same as last time. Yes, said Naruto, I agree. This time, I shall end you quickly without hesitation or much trouble. Orochimaru then looked at Kabuto as he raised the eyebrow. Kabuto, as he got no response from his number 2. Kabuto, he said again, as he still didn't get any response. He then poked Kabuto on the forehead. As Kabuto's body hit the ground with a thud, as he wasn't blinking, he wasn't moved and his eyes were fixed on one position. It was like he was frozen. Orochimar frowned as he knew that this was surely the work of a genjutsu. Well, it did not matter anyway. Kabuto has been useful to him, but if things are to go the way he planned, he will no longer need Kabuto. Orochimar opened his mouth and a snake came out, carrying the sword of Kusunaki within his mouth. He gripped the sword with his right hand. Naruto simply shook his head. Fighting Orochimaru was not in his plans if he was this weak. The fight would only be annoying to him. Orochimaru then took a simple step forward before charging towards Naruto. He rushed towards Naruto in Joni level speed. As he appeared in front of Naruto, he swung his blade to slice Naruto right on the chest. Naruto simply jumped back and avoided the attack. He still have his eternal Mangeta Sharingan activated. Orochimaru rushed forward, swinging his sword right to Naruto's face, who simply ducked under the swings. Orochimaru was expecting this reaction from Naruto. He swung his left foot, intending to kick Naruto, but Naruto jumped back away from him. Wind release, wind breakthrough, Orochimaru yelled as he released a gust of wind as it flew towards Naruto, who simply disappeared from his position. The wind traveled towards the wall, destroying it after missing Naruto. Naruto then reappeared as Orochimaru rushed towards him with a flying kick, which Naruto blocked with both of his hands. He then grabbed Orochimaru's leg and threw him away from him. Orochimaru flipped in the air and landed down on the ground. You're not even trying to fight me, Orochimaru said. That took you long to notice, Naruto stated as he crossed his arms over his chest. Orochimaru was not making the mistakes of looking into his eyes. He would just have used Sukuyomi if the snake Sanin had given him a chance, as there was no point of this fight. With Orochimaru's current strength, there was no way he was going to beat me, Naruto said. Orochimaru then pushed off in the fastest speed he can now possess. As he appeared behind Naruto, many hidden shadow snakes. A snake shot out of his sleeves towards Naruto. Naruto turned around as he said, Amaterasu, as the snake started engulfing black fire. Seeing that Naruto was now facing him, Orochimaru blew a purple smoke towards Naruto. The smoke hit Naruto right on his face before he could escape it. Nevertheless, he jumped away from the smoke. Orochimaru smirked seeing his success as the smirk turned into a devilish grin as he watched Naruto like a hawk. Poison, said Naruto as he could feel it inside of his body. The smoke that he just breathed in, as Orochimaru started to chuckle darkly. Yes, and it is not just a normal poison, it is a very deadly poison that I created after our last encounter. And the poison I used back then when I was fighting you was weak. This one is much, much stronger. Nothing can counter it. Well, except for me. You are very confident of your poison, Naruto said. You are dragging me into a fight that you cannot win. It is annoying and I refuse to carry this on any longer. With that, Naruto dashed towards Orochimaru with incredible speeds. 
Naruto slammed his fist into Orochimaru's face as he was sent flying back, slamming into a wall. As Naruto noticed that Orochimaru didn't do anything to try and dodge him, Naruto rushed towards the wall where Orochimaru had crashed. Naruto then rushed towards the wall towards Orochimaru as he then saw a snake. Suddenly, the world changed. As he looked around, he then saw Orochimaru in his true form with a lot of white snakes creating him. So this is your true form. The last time I saw it, I couldn't get over it. You're so hideous, said Naruto. You have truly made yourself a monster, Orochimaru, said Naruto. Orochimaru chuckled darkly, ignoring Naruto's comment about his true form. I have you now, Naruto. This is my world, and you cannot escape it. Oh, so this you wanted to do. I found it curious that you wanted to fight me and you know that you couldn't win. I also found it curious when you did nothing, when I defeated all of your bodyguards. He then paused for a moment. So this was your goal. You wanted my body all along. Orochimaru's snake form simply grinned in an evil way. How do you know that it would work? This body, transformation jutsu of yarns, don't work on a Jinjuliki. But you are no longer a Jinjuliki, Naruto, Orochimaru replied with a smirk. So, when did you become interested in taking my body, Naruto asked. Ever since, I discovered the secrets of your body, Orochimaru replied. A pity, I will never make you do anything like that. Orochimaru simply chuckled. You cannot escape this world, it is mine, and I control everything here. Who said that this was your world? Naruto questioned. What are you saying? said Orochimaru. Again Jutsu, when I saw your true form I know that you were up to something. So I placed you under again Jutsu to make you see what you wanted to see. Naruto stated. As the illusion dispelled and Orochimaru found himself staring at Naruto back at the throne room. You have tried this Jutsu on Itachi before. Orochimaru, did you remember what he said? All of your ninjutsu before my eyes are useless. Naruto then paused for a moment as Orochimaru scoffed, remembering that embarrassing memory. So, I, Uchiha Naruto will repeat those words since you failed to understand them last time. Orochimaru, before my eyes, your ninjutsu are useless. Orochimaru charged at Naruto, looking very pissed and upset by his words. As he was still wondering why Naruto hasn't got weak because of his poison. The poison was deadly, he attested that. Perhaps that Naruto was just having a delayed reaction to the poison. Naruto draw his blade and coursed it with wind chakra. As Orochimaru's head came launching towards him. But guys, I'm going to be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this or know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember to go ahead and share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also go ahead and check out my main channel because I'm going to be posting what if Naruto went missing for 4 years after this. And what if Naruto was taken by the Raikage for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and enjoy. And for now, I'm out guys. Peace.